Beijing is the host of the 2022 Winter Olympics, and during normal Olympic years, tourism and travel would be buzzing with excitement. While you may not see the best of Beijing on this year's Olympic broadcast, we thought we'd take you on a tour of Beijing, China, the only city ever to host the Summer and Winter Olympic Games. So let's take a look at the top attractions in Beijing. Here we go everybody, we're entering the Great Wall of China, let's go. The Bataling Great Wall is located one hour outside of Beijing and no trip to the city would be complete without seeing this wonder of the world. The Bataling Wall attracts mostly local tourists from around China and it is considered the best preserved part of the entire Great Wall of China. We're on the Great Wall. We're walking up to the towers right now. This is the iconic one that you see on all the magazines and on, on TV. It's very exciting. There's hardly any tourists here. It's mostly locals that are here visiting the Great Wall. So it's really cool to experience it with everybody that is here from China. The Battling Great Wall is three and a half miles long with an elevation gain of a little over a thousand feet. There are lookout towers and places to walk out to viewpoints for better views of the wall and the valley. Make sure to give yourself at least two to three hours to explore the Battling portion of the Great Wall of China. Steve. We are still going up, 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 up. It's steeper than you'd expect. It's a bit of a workout. It's getting steep. And that was the Great Wall of China. All right, we're about to enter the Temple of Heaven here in Beijing. The Temple of Heaven is located 6 kilometers south of the Forbidden City and is a massive 2.7 square kilometer complex that was used by the Ming Dynasty to pray for a good harvest. So this is obviously the center prayer rock where people stand in line to stand in the center of the Temple of Heaven and pray. As you walk through the complex, you'll pass different altars including the Circular Mound Altar, the Imperial Vault of Heaven, and the Hall of Prayers for Good Harvests. So we're off to the Hall of Prayer for Great Harvests. Let's go! There are 92 buildings to explore at the Temple of Heaven and a guided tour is highly recommended. And one thing to make sure to test are the echoes at the Echo Wall. So we're heading past the Echo Wall and going in to where they store the tablet. Ah! You can hear it all the way around. And when they built this, they didn't know that because it's a perfect circle that surrounds this temple. It's an echo. So we are walking along the corridor where they took the sacrificial animals down here and obviously slaughtered them and then brought them out to the barrels over there to be burned as a sacrifice. Hey guys! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to enter the Forbidden City. It's not so forbidden anymore, people. So we've made it here inside the Forbidden City, inside the, the main gate, and man, you can just feel the history here when you walk in. It's been here for so long, you wonder who walked along these stones. It really is one of the most impressive places I've seen. The Forbidden City is the number one tourist attraction in Beijing. Built in the 1400s during the Ming Dynasty, it was used to house the emperor's households for 500 years. His wives, concubines, eunuchs, and guards were not allowed to leave and nobody was allowed inside the inner circle. Today, it is open to anyone to tour the enormous complex of more than 8,000 rooms and its imperial gardens. 
so we've entered into the inner workings of the palace here. This is where he had his concubines and all the secret stuff went down, I suppose. So we're getting a peek inside royal life here in Beijing. So when you go to the Forbidden City, make sure you head up to the hill to get an overview over everything. Jingshan Park is a royal garden above the Forbidden City and takes you up to the highest point in Beijing, offering an impressive overview of the entire complex. It is definitely worth walking up the hill to overlook the Forbidden City. The moat is 52 meters wide, and that's because back in the day, an arrow couldn't shoot farther than 52 meters, so it kept everyone safe. So come on up here and you look over the whole of the Forbidden City and Beijing. It's busy, but it's worth it. So we're here in Tiananmen Square, which is the largest square in the world, at 100 acres. That's pretty huge when you think about it. It's bigger than the Red Square in Russia, and it is pretty magnificent to be standing here. This is one of the only gates that is left here in Beijing, and right beside it you can see that there is another gate, which is actually the guard gate. So that is to look over that one and protect it. There are only two gates left here in Beijing. This is where all the action happens. This is behind me is the government building and the People's Monument uh, commemorating all the wars and all the people who have died for China. You have the National Museum on one side, you have Chairman Mao's tomb on the other, and you have Tiananmen Gate, the oldest building in the square built 600 years ago. Way to Lama Temple. Lama Temple is a Buddhist temple and monastery in Beijing. And while it is a functioning temple, it's also a popular tourist attraction that is open to visitors. Well, we're about to go into the Gate of Harmony and Peace, and this is where everybody burns their incense. So the final temple is the Temple of 10,000 Happiness and it is a treat. There's a 26 meter high Buddha in there that is carved out of one single sandalwood tree. It's made the Guinness Book of World Records and wow, it is impressive. Wow, this is the temple to come to. to the drum and bell towers. You can walk up and get a panoramic view of the area. The bell and drum towers date back to the 1200s and were used to announce time until 1924. They now offer great views of the historic hutongs of Beijing, another not to miss attraction in the city. Go for a walk in the hutongs of Beijing. Hutongs are historic narrow alleyways that are residential neighborhoods of Beijing. They were nearly demolished to make room for newer buildings, but luckily they have now been designated historic sites. Make sure you come to the Hutong area and visit Pipe Street for a great old Chinese experience. Get lost walking through the maze of streets or take a rickshaw ride to explore the entire area. Well, I don't think there's anything more authentically Chinese than going for a rickshaw ride downtown here in Beijing. Rickshaws take you through the back streets of the Hutongs to the man-made lake in Beijing, Huhai, or Back Sea. This artificial lake is surrounded by shops and tea houses, and you can take boat tours or just simply walk around and enjoy the energy. It really is a fun way to explore the city. A lesser known museum in Beijing is the Xuanan Museum. It's an exhibit hall of Chinese drama, folk music, business, and old Beijing culture. It's a hidden gem in a very busy city. 
Okay, we're at the Chong Twek Temple. <laughs> Chong Chen. Wow. Chong. Yeah, almost. Oh, Stephanie oh, says I got it, so I believe her. <laughs> just, just go with it. While visiting the museum, for some reason, they had Dave and I dress up and do some wrestling. I don't know. Maybe they just wanted to see the foreigners make fools of themselves. But we had a lot of fun. This was the type of wrestling that they did at the Olympic Games. I think Dave and I are not very good at it. But we're fashionable. We are. So we had a great time here learning some wrestling with Fu. He's been my instructor. You may see me at the next uh, Olympic Games with him, you know, maybe. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Shit, shit. Well, we're doing a little bit of Chinese calligraphy here. We're going to see how artistic we are. And hey, we're lucky we get to put on a costume. Yeah. He was much thinner than me. This is what the king would wear. Calligraphy is a sacred art in China, and it dates back 6,000 years. An interesting cultural experience is to try your hand at it when in Beijing. Most hotels and tour operators offer classes to tourists. Wait. Yeah. Yeah. Do we raise up a little bit? Yeah. yeah. Had a great time learning calligraphy here. If you come to Beijing, make sure you give this a try. It tests out your artistic prowess. Come to the famous Bird's Nest Stadium. This is where the 2008 Olympics took place here in Beijing. Bird's Nest Stadium is the national stadium of Beijing and it is also being used again for the 2022 Winter Olympics and Paralympics. You can catch concerts, sporting events, cultural events, or you can simply tour the museum for a backstage look at this historical site. We're doing some Hua family dining tonight with Peking Duck, one of the most famous places here in Beijing to get the dish. Peking duck is the national dish of China that was once only reserved for royalty and VIPs. Today, no trip to Beijing would be complete without giving it a try. So it's pretty cool, you eat your appetizers or all those things that we had and then they bring the duck to your table and cut it right in front of you. And they only use the best portions of the duck as well, so it's got to be succulent and it will be tasty. So when you get your Peking duck, you've got to put it all together. And this is how you do it. You start with a pancake, you roll it out in your hand, you take the first piece of duck, you dip it in the first sauce, spread it on the pancake, place it in there. Grab another piece of Peking duck, put it in the second sauce, which is soybean sauce, and then you spread that on the pancake as well. And then you start adding all your fixings, whatever you like. Then once it's finished, you just fold it one side, fold the other side, bring the two ends in, and you're ready to eat. All right, well, we're making dumplings here at the Chinese Royal Gastronomy Museum, and uh, we'll see what kind of cook we are. I'm ready for surgery. Dumpling surgery happening. The Royal Gastronomy Museum is a walk through Chinese cuisine history. We had a chance to explore displays of imperial cuisines, followed by making our own dumplings, and we learned how to make authentic Chinese dumplings. We then got to sample our meals with a cultural show for entertainment. Okay, it's dumpling time. They brought out the dumplings that we made, and I'm about to taste it. Mm. Best dumpling ever. When you come to Beijing, you have to try a hot pot. It's not only a meal, but an experience as well. <laughs> so we got beef, we've got mushrooms, we've got actually a bunch of different kinds of mushrooms in there, and who knows what else, but it looks good. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
look at that plate of goodness. So you put everything in the hot pot and let it heat up and then cook it and then I put it in to my peanut sauce and eat it. Let's see if I can eat it really delicately. That is so good. Come and learn the art of bean curd and how to make tofu. So this is how to make bean curd with Dave. Starts off with yellow beans, like this. Put them into the hole, like that. Add some water. And then really, it's all in the way you turn it. All right, so we start counterclockwise. A one or two turns, and then we turn back this way. Two turns, three turns, four turns, so it gets easy. You can see the beans go down in between the two rocks, like that, and it all comes out like a goo, like that. And we're ready for our next step in making bean curd. So once the bean curd has boiled, just scoop it out and put it in a mold in here, and then you press it down. And then once all the water is out, you just lift this off and you have your finished product. Welcome to Silk Street. It used to actually be outside where they sold a lot of knockoffs. Now they've moved it inside and covered it, but it's still a pretty cool street. Silk Street is a multi-floor shopping market in Beijing that is famous for its knockoff name brands. It's a popular tourist attraction to go and pick up your souvenirs from China. It's a good place in China to get uh, a bright link. Yeah. <laughs> this time must be come back to <laughs> this yeah. Taking the subway here in Beijing, it's actually pretty simple. You can go to one of the machines, you choose which line you're going to, but you need to know what station you're also going to because it charges you by distance. Uh, don't worry about it once everything here is in English, so um, you can figure it out pretty easily. You'll go through security, come downstairs to the subway, and then it shows you which side you should stand on depending on what the end station is. So it's pretty simple to get around, um, and uh, I think anybody can do it. So the machines here in Beijing are pretty easy. All you have to do is you come up here, the English button for everything, and then what you do is you have to know what line and where you're going. We are going to line 10, and we're going to Gumao station. So you just hit the station that you're going to, and it tells you how much it costs. Two tickets, total six yuan. And then all you do is insert your money, and your tickets come out, and you're good to go. And that is your tour of Beijing. It's definitely a city that is out of this world with so many things to see and do and thousands of years of history. If you have a chance to make it to China, make sure to add Beijing to the top of your list. And if you enjoyed our videos, be sure to subscribe because we put out new travel videos each week.